Microsoft Surface Pro X is the company's endorsement of its Windows on ARM efforts. It uses modified Qualcomm processors for a fanless appearance that's thinner than the Intel-powered Surface, and in many ways, it's ahead of the curve. The Surface Pro X has narrower bezels than the Surface Pro 7, and it's the first Surface to fit a pen garage into the attachable keyboard. In fact, Microsoft spent a lot of time rethinking what the new Surface device would be like. Being so thin, the team couldn't stick with the traditional Surface features, like magnetically attaching the pen to the side. The keyboard connector was redesigned, the USB Type-A was ditched, and more. When it was first launched, many thought this was what the Surface Pro 8 would be, and that's exactly what happened, aside from the thin, fanless design. To be clear, Microsoft hasn't announced this product, and there really aren't any solid rumors around it. We don't even know for sure that it will be called the Surface Pro X2, that's just an assumption. Back when Microsoft announced the fifth-generation Surface Pro, it went back to numerical names with the Surface Pro 6, saying it was easier for customers. Unless Microsoft changes up branding on the Surface Pro X entirely, Surface Pro X2 is the likely bet. The custom Microsoft SQ1 and SQ2 processors in use now are just tweaked versions of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 CX, which hasn't been refreshed in a meaningful way until just recently. It's likely that Microsoft could have an SQ3 that's based on the Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 3, given how closely Microsoft and Qualcomm work together on this. I do expect pricing to come down though. When the Surface Pro X first launched, it started at $999, although you can get it for $150 less these days. That got you an SQ1 processor, 8GB RAM, and a 128GB SSD. For an incredible $300 more, you could upgrade to the same configuration, but with 256GB of storage. Now, Microsoft just announced a Wi-Fi only model, bringing the entry-level price down to $899. While still more expensive than an entry-level Surface Pro 7, it's much less expensive than the entry-level Surface Pro 8, which costs $1,099. First of all, second-generation Surface products have historically been spec bumps. This was the case with the Surface Pro 2, Surface Book 2, and Surface Laptop 2. Exceptions include the Surface Go 2, which had a larger screen and even the Surface 2, which had a better screen than the infamous Surface RT. I would expect the Surface Pro X2 to look and feel exactly the same as the Surface Pro X, just with a faster processor. The Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 2 was a difference of 150MHz clock speed over the original, and that's it. Qualcomm said the reason for such a minor refresh was because it was trying to shorten the time between when a chipset is announced, and when it lands in products you can purchase. Indeed, the Snapdragon 8 CX was originally announced in December 2018, but the Samsung Galaxy Book S, the first laptop to use it, didn't ship until the beginning of 2020. The Surface Pro X, which used the modified 8 CX known as the SQ1, shipped a bit earlier in November 2019. Qualcomm actually has a pretty exciting roadmap. Following the Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 3, it should start sampling completely custom chips using technology from its Nuvia acquisition in late 2022. After that, it's going to be aiming to compete with Apple Silicon, something the San Diego firm is struggling to do right now. I'm almost hesitant to say this, given Microsoft's reluctance to adopt modern technologies, but we should expect 5G in the Surface Pro X2. One of the value indicators with Windows on ARM was supposed to be integrated cellular connectivity, even if many companies are opting to build Wi-Fi only models instead. But the Surface Pro X comes with 4G LT, no matter which one you get, and that's a good thing. The Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 3, unlike the Snapdragon 7 C Plus Gen 3, still doesn't have an integrated 5G modem, but it's considered a 5G chipset. That should translate to 5G in the Microsoft SQ3. Whether it supports waiver only sub 6 GHz bands is anyone's guess though. I can make you all sorts of wishlists around the Surface Pro X. It's my favorite Microsoft PC. But there's only one thing I really want. Thunderbolt. I understand that this year's Surface Pro X still isn't going to compete with Apple's totally custom silicon. That's okay. Let's see Thunderbolt though. USB 4.0 allows for 40 GB per second data transfer speeds. You'll be able to use it to connect dual 4K monitors or 18K monitor, depending on the limitation of the chipset. External GPU support is unlikely without native drivers, but you'd have access to the wide array of Thunderbolt peripherals on the market. But the benefits of Thunderbolt aside, Apple does it. For years now, I've been watching his Macs were ahead of Surface on USB Type-C, Thunderbolt, and some other things. Let's stop watching from the sidelines while Apple goes the extra mile. Microsoft Surface Pro 8 offers a 120Hz display, and it's pretty great. Let's put something similar on the Surface Pro X2. To go a bit deeper on that, I'd really like the Windows ecosystem to drop some of the stark differences between PC and mobile. A big example is how any premium smartphone has a high refresh rate display, but in the PC world, that's seen as a gaming feature, and those high refresh rates will make sacrifices 
sacrifices for better gaming performance. When Microsoft announced the original Surface Pro X, it came in black, rather than the more traditional platinum color that Surface is known for. The platinum model came later, but one thing worth noting is the Surface Pro X is made out of aluminum, while the Intel-powered model is made out of magnesium. That's why the Pro X is thinner but still the same weight, aluminum is a heavier material. Aluminum is also easier to anodize, so it can be more easily produced in different colors. The best example is obviously the Surface Laptop. While the Surface Laptop 4 comes in more subtle colors today, it was originally introduced in bold beautiful colors like cobalt blue and burgundy. With newer models, we got black, sandstone, and ice blue. I'd love to see some of these colors in the Surface Pro X2. I know I'm not a designer. I don't know if the right choice is the bolder colors that look so beautiful on the Surface Laptop, or the more subtle colors that might look better on a Windows tablet. I also don't want to once again fall back on Apple is doing it, but seriously, Apple is doing it. I actually plan to only include Thunderbolt on my wishlist, since it's really just one of those things that stands out. But the higher refresh rate and the different colors snuck in there. I'd also love to see a quieter keyboard in touchpad, and while this may seem minor, my hope is this will launch with Android app support, something that's coming in Windows 11, but not at launch. This is all we know about the Surface Pro X2 for now. We'll update this page as we learn more. As we get closer to launch, there should be no shortage of leaks and rumors. I hope this video was useful for you, if so, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Have a nice day and see you soon.